This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk with Matt Hatfield on ESPN Radio 94.1. Coming to you live from the Boo Williams Sportsplex in Hampton for the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest. This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk. Brought to you by Larry King Law here on ESPN Radio 94.1. If you're injured in an accident, you call 757-INJURED for Larry King. I am Matt Hatfield. Uh, The coach, Ed Young, is to no surprise of anyone out there uh, stuck in traffic. And if he does not break every speeding law in the book and bypass, uh, if we have Al and Jimmy here to help us get set up, does not bypass the temperature check-in here he's probably going to miss us getting brian kersey on the acc supervisor of officials and of course the son of the late great jess kersey who went into the uh hampton road sports hall of fame we know about jess being an nba referee officiating uh many a playoff games and big championship games for several years and brian was one of the better officials in college basketball before he moved into his new role so uh, ed's going to literally hit the turbo button dino wherever he is on the interstate or somewhere to make sure he gets here quickly stuck in traffic we've never heard that in hampton roads no that means he's going to spend the first 28 minutes i'm sorry first 26 minutes of the show <laughs> uh complaining about the traffic i left at 7 30 this morning yeah, as it, he famously says you know if he didn't stop for donuts five times along the way he'd been on time today Oh, you're saying he hit the donut trip. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's going to have some, some fuel for you, uh, Dino, when he gets here. But Dino Friends at the voice you hear back in our Virginia Beach studios. We've had a lot of special guests over the years here. This is one of, if not the biggest, uh, one of the bigger Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest for a variety of reasons. We've had some special guests such as Tim Legler of ESPN, Jay Billis of ESPN. Uh, Manny Upton came by one year. We had on Shaquille O'Neal's son, Sharif. We're going to keep our fingers crossed that we can get the number one basketball player in the country as far as high school prospects go in one Amani Bates, who plays for Team Final. He was originally committed to Michigan State as of a few weeks ago, but then decommitted, and now there's whispers if he doesn't go to play for one of the Blue Bloods, heavy hitters, powers in all of college basketball, that uh, he will end up going to the G League, but certainly... We will uh, try to get him if we can. If he gets here before his team's game at 1045, we can put him on. You want to come on now? What time? We can put you on right now because Ed Young has walked in if you want to come on now real quick. I think he, he wants to speak to you. <laughs> As We're going we're gonna to set things up to get uh, Brian Kersey on real quick. You'll come back? Okay. Ten minutes. We'll put Brian Kersey on in ten minutes, folks. As Ed is here. Oh, he, I just got the word, Dino. Uh, as I was telling you about Amani Bates, who you, you should have seen this crowd last night. It was unbelievable. It rivaled uh, several years ago when we had Miles Bridges of the Charlotte Hornets, Thon Maker of the NBA, Bam Adebayo of the Miami Heat, who opened their playoff series today against the Milwaukee Bucks, the reigning Eastern Conference champs. As people were wall-to-wall, packed in here to see young uh, Amani Bates for team final, who will be playing coming up at 10.45 a.m. this morning. You also have Dewan Wagner Jr. Remember his dad played in the nba he's the number one rated sophomore in the country he is here and then we also have a uh, yukon pledge and Corey floyd we have a, just a a, a a scattering of players all over the place uh here today and this weekend at the boo williams sportsplex in hampton as i think we're going to get ed young set up here in just a moment and we'll have uh brian kersey on in about 10 minutes or so we're going to talk to potentially rick height he is the head Boys basketball coach at Kings Fork High in Suffolk. His team, he coaches the Boo Williams 16 under, under squad. They are cruising right now 74 to 39, I think it is, against Garner Rhodes' 16 and under squad uh, with ease. He also coaches his son Ryan on this 16 and under team, and Kings Fork won a state boys basketball championship in Class 4 in 2019. We'll have on, I'm sure, the Hoop Group dignitaries like Steve Keller and Rob Kennedy, the president of Hoop Group, who has joined us many a times. But we say hello to our first go- co-host slash guest of the morning, wearing his proudly wearing his New York Yankees mask, as he's going to tell us all about how great Aaron Judge is and how great his Yankees are. And I'm going to get a bucket to throw up in. We say good morning to Ed Young. How are you, sir? Hey, Matthew, can you hear me? I, I can't hear you at all in my headset, but let's see if Dino can hear you back in the studios. Try talking again, Dino, Ed. Dino, Dino, can you hear me, Dino? I've got you, Ed. A little low, though. You might want to boost right. up the volume a bit. Let's, let's try boosting up your volume. Boost up the volume. I, I can't mess. They don't, you know Dino I ain't allowed to touch no buttons. You told me that. There you go. Now you sound loud and clear. 
I was just reading the newspaper. I'm going to check. First thing I want to check and make sure I'm not in the obituaries. No, you're, you're still alive. Okay, that part's good. That's always good to keep that going. Back Man, this is great to be out in, in a basketball atmosphere with all these people, all these players. Man, this. You got your this, temperature check, right, when you came in and did all the little questionnaire? Uh, get temperature check. I had to give a pint of blood. Um, oh, they I had to turn. Pint of blood? They asked me to turn my head and cough. I don't know what all that was about. Private room. Um, it's a lot of stuff you got to do to get in here, but I'm in here, and man, this is some stuff, some hoops galore. I'm gonna have to do some recruit. Uh, uh, look no, for some players today. Um, I need, I need a little bit of help. I need six six and six four. I'm gonna show you the pictures here. I, unfortunately, we're on radio, so people can't see us. We're not simulcast on TV, but Ed, you should have seen how packed this place was. Jimmy can attest to it because he was here. This was a madhouse last night to see. Not only did you have the number one ranked player in the country according to Rivals.com and ESPN in Imani Bates, but you had the number two ranked player on the same team in Jalen Duran, who's a five-star from the wow. Academy, and he can pretty much choose his own school. There's a picture. It was a Jimmy Circle to you. Jam-packed. This place was, and now they've got a rope up this morning because I guess to control any type of uh, movement towards, yeah, the court. towards the court everybody's wearing a mask Jimbo put your mask on I can't afford um, whatever whatever disease well, you, you got have I got, my vaccine. I got mine too I've got six of those safe and, uh, we'll see if we can try to get Mr. Bates on before who Williams' team won very comfortably last night Ed and they've got some local players if you're interested yes who, who they got local just this uh, AAU basketball tournament, tournament this weekend we got NBA playoffs starting this weekend you got a lot of baseball storylines as we mentioned the Yankees are doing well. A lot of things to go over in the world of sports. High school sports news as well. Local sports news. Well, how about Old Dominion Baseball, by the way? How great are they right now? They beat Louisiana Tech back-to-back -back nights coming from behind. And Ruston, La Tech ranked, I think, as high as 14th in the country. Monarchs are 20th in one of the national polls. Chris Finwood's got that team roaring. And it's good to know that Chris Finwood came on with me on, these, on this radio station, not with you, because he would have gone in a deep dive and lost about 10 in a row. So. Could have been. Yeah, it could have been. I've been known to be a jinx. Besides the basketball. But back to the hoops for a second. Who Williams travel team last night winning 97 to 49 over uh, VA running Rebels. I'm sorry. Uh, VS running Rebels, not VA running Rebels. And uh, some local players you might note. Elijah Kennedy, who played at Green Run, who's now going to uh, Combine Prep Academy. You've got uh, Dewan Campbell from Kikatana High School. Those two guys combined for 21 points in the first half of that route last night. You also have Kanye Clary, who played at Princess Anna High in Virginia Beach, now at Massanut Military Academy. So just a, uh, a host of players uh, from the 757 area code. You have all the different age divisions. You have 17 and under, 16 and under, 15 and under. Why is this AAU tournament unique? Because you have the blending of the different shoe companies. You have teams that play with Nike, teams that play with uh, Adidas, Under Armour, all the various groups on this uh, Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest tour, if you will. They go to different Southern Jam Fest, the different uh, Pittsburgh Jam Fest, all kinds of different events. So uh, that's the one neat thing here. So we're going to pop on uh, Brian Kersey now as uh, we're going to move off the seat here. We'll put on the ACC supervisor official. Now we'll make sure that we've got his uh, cranked up to where it needs to be here as we bring in the one and only uh, Brian Kirsten, we spoke to him, I think, last on these airwaves a couple years ago when we were speaking with him about his late great father, Jess, being inducted into the Hampton Road Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah. How are you, Brian? I'm doing great. How y'all doing? Tremendous. Glad to see we could get the full crew here. It is, yeah. Well, tell me about this. Uh, how's the past year been for you uh, in your duties as the AC Supervisor of Officials and just this past wild and wacky year with everything, with all the protocols, with COVID and you know, what kind of college hoops are we going to have at all? We've had that question with all of the sports, not just college yeah. basketball. But kind of people behind the scenes a little bit with hurt. Uh, it, was, it was nuts. It was, uh, you know, all our guys tested three or four times a week. They, uh, you know, we, we had three at every game, which was great. You know, we had so many people. The leagues were, the leagues helped us out. They paid for all the tests. So our guys could, you know, they mailed them in. They, I mean, it was hard, but, you know, I, I it, it was a good year to, to be a supervisor instead of a referee, I think, because, you know, they, they didn't go home. I mean, some of these guys stayed in hotels right around the corner from the house because they are afraid they were either going to catch it or give it to somebody. We had some guys catch it, and, you know, about 100 less guys ended up working games, so the leagues didn't have to pay so much in testing. But, you know, they got through it and survived, and Final Four happened, and conference tournaments happened, and if you'd have told me that, you know, this time last year, I don't know if any of us thought that would have ever happened. 
I think Ed can attest to this as well, with it'll be a coach, a player, and I think for you all in the officiating business, every time your phone buzzes or rings during that period, are you just waiting like, oh no, let's listen oh, to yeah. the news? Is that what you're Yeah, I mean, every morning, every morning we ended up, you know, we hit, we were worried we were going to play games. I mean, we had games canceled as referees were on the way to the arenas. So, I mean, it was, you know, it was nuts. The kids, you know, they, they stayed in the bubbles pretty much on campus. and It worked out. So, I'm glad it's over. Well, hopefully we get to this season. None of that's here. Yeah, hopefully a different college hoop season for the ACC, A10CA, Supervisor Officials. You know him for many years. He's been on our airwaves here on ESPN Radio. 94.1 Brian Kirsten with us here on 757 Saturday Sports Talk as we speak to you live from the Hoop Hoop Southern Jam Fest at the Blue Williams Sportsplex in Hampton. Right? Uh, Brian, first of all, great to see you. Great as to see always. you always. Um, been a crazy year. I, yeah. I've been hiding under the bed for the longest of times. Yep. Unfortunately, our season got canceled, and, and yeah, in all seriousness, first time I hadn't coached a team maybe in about 40 years, I, depression hit me hard. Oh, I bet. I mean, hard, hard. But yep. it's getting to be out here today. This is some medicine for me to see it. Yep. Now, stepping back, as, as the supervisor, did, did you spend a lot of time this past year traveling to games? Like, you couldn't just sit back in an office and take phone calls were you out and about knowing your personality i'm going to guess that you were um but in your duties is that what you had to do out in no TV what's games? what's crazy is is you know they shut all our travel all the supervisors got shut down travel wise okay so I, I i had you know dv sport does all of our instant replay stuff in game and i get all of their stuff to me so i had them actually come into my office here in newport news put up two more TVs hooked to their system so that I would now have six TVs in that office so I could watch them because regardless of the, if there's fans or not, referees do miss calls and coaches do get upset. So I have to be right. prepared. And it it, uh, it allowed me to do a lot more training, I guess, with the referees uh, because of making videos and stuff like that, clipping plays. It uh, kept me at home, which – uh, my wife was really glad I got out of town last week for a week to get back on the road. and uh, But, no, it was I, I hate staying home all the time because I enjoy the travel. I enjoy seeing all my guys. But I wasn't taking any chances on them getting sick. I wasn't taking any chances on me getting sick and bringing it home to anybody. So, I mean, we just, you know, made a collective decision. The best thing to do is just do it the way we did it. Funny how he mentions his wife's glad he's out of the house. But when he was traveling earlier, he, she wanted to know when he's ever coming back to cut the grass. That's right. And then when you're there, she wants you out. So exactly right. Can't please the women, exactly but there's nothing right. like them. Yeah, but, you know, they did do uh, direct deposit my last 10 or 15 years on the floor. So, she, so that helps. She, she knew if I came home, I wasn't getting a direct deposit the next day. Exactly. And they don't mind that direct deposit. They'd rather That's have right. that home than, than the actual body. That's right. Um, you know, it's been a while, Brian, that we've had you on. We've yeah. been doing this. So let, let's do this real quick. If you don't mind. Sure. Let's do your. Let's go a little background. Let's go back in time. Okay. Let people know, um, you know, when you started the where you're from. Yeah. And you started officiating. But a lot of people know, and, and Matt mentioned about your your dad being yeah. a big time official Hall of Famer, Jake Kersey. So, let let go ahead and let the people know who Brian Kersey is. Grew up right here in Newport News. Uh, it was great. Loved it. Dad was in the ABA. I was a ball boy for the Virginia Squires when they played at the Hampton Coliseum. Yep. So I got to see all the greats. And I started my first uh, middle school game I refereed. I was in the 10th grade at Peninsula Catholic High School. Um, so we refereed it actually a preliminary game to a game at Christopher Newport. So the game was an old Ratcliffe gym. So uh, got into Division I in, in, uh, in the Big South in 1985. And everything kind of took off from that point. Got into Colonial in 86. You know, they, they were, uh, Colonial was formed in 85. I got into Colonial in 86 and the old Southern Comp, well, it's still the Southern Comp, SOCON, you know, and then things took off, got in the ACC in 89, the Atlantic 10, I worked in the Big East, the SEC, the Big 12, uh, traveled, you know, worked 27 years in the ACC, worked the uh, championship game in the ACC seven times, went to the Final Four in 2015 in Indianapolis, and, you know, I had a great teacher in my dad, great motivator great uh uh villain at times when i miss something but uh you know some people grow up their dads are doctors and lawyers they want to be doctors and lawyers my dad was a referee and and i loved every minute of it. nothing better and coach you know this than getting there for that opening toss whether you're coaching playing or refereeing 
You know, you got a big game and the place is packed and you're getting ready to throw it up. Coach has – coach, you know it. it, it We're all excited. People can say what they want. It, it's nothing better than that. Well, you know, I, I've got to say it because I'm the type of person that says what it's on my mind. The thing I always liked about Brian Kurtz, the audio referee, and, and watching you, you're into the game, you're knowledgeable about the game, 99% of the time you're in the right position, and when us nut job coaches goes off, and that's not always me, but – you do a great job of handling the situation, letting the coach talk because they are we are wound up at times. But you do a great job with that. You don't have to throw out technical technical right. calls all over the place to players. Right. You do a great job of talking with players and keeping preventive refereeing. I guess is what right. I want to yeah, say. That's probably a good way. To and play. that's the thing I've admired about you with you being on the court. Now, with that all in mind, though, now are you done? Yeah, I'm putting I'm, a striped shirt on. So yeah, I don't have to put it on. I came off the floor in 2016. Uh, after the season in 2016, became supervisor officials for the Atlantic Coast Conference, which is the only job, and the Atlantic 10, the only jobs I would have come off, you know, the floor for. You know, I worked a lot of years in the Atlantic. I had more years. I had 28 years in the Atlantic 10 and 27 in the ACC. You know, those, and they came together. You know, they've been together for a long time, as well as the Colonial, which I was my longest you know, next to, and I now have the Big South as well. And then we're in alliance with the Big East and the Patriot and the Ivy and the MEAC. You know, the MEAC is a, a huge part of us. Larry Rose, as you know, is local, a very, very yes. close friend of mine. And the MEAC is a huge part of, you know, they have very good referees in the league. We, we help develop referees and move them up, and, you know. And so I'm out here pretty much helping them any way I can. And then I'm looking at the officials that they have here. So... You know, I've been a supervisor now. I just finished my fifth year, which sounds crazy. I never thought, you know, and 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 uh, it keeps me busy. I've got a few more camps this summer, and and uh, it, it, but it, it's it's basketball. Still, ba I love to see him back out there playing. You know, last summer was awful with nobody. I was at a camp last week at at uh, in Sewanee, Georgia, the, the old Bob Gibbons camp. Yes, yep. which was great, and uh, you know, it's just good to see him back out there. Yeah, and, and the idea that um, people don't know this a lot of times, as a supervisor and evaluating, a lot of referees are trying to make moves like players. Correct. To go from one league to a higher league. I mean, let's, let's call 100%. it what it is. 100%. And, of course, they've got to have certain standards to meet. And and when you're looking to move an official from a lower Division One conference to an ACC level, what's maybe one or two big things you're looking for? Well, and you just talked about one of them just a little while ago. Communication with coaches has to be huge. You know, I was taught at an early age to try to diffuse instead of distract and or escalate. And, you know, argue and escalate, diffuse and help. So their communication skills are huge. They got, of course, now competition is crazy because they all got to be in shape. So, I mean, it's nuts. It's nuts. Brian, we'll get you on this one. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, the absolutely. Program, Thank always. you. Um, what's been the biggest conversation piece amongst the officials here as you gear up for – I guess the rest of the summer, then the college hoop season. What's been kind of the biggest hot they, button topic or discussion? Uh, they all just want to know, you know, how deep we're going to go. You know, are the teams going to play the other four games that they missed this year? Because if you think about it, every Division One team lost four games. You know, that's a lot of games across. You know, my assignments. Yeah. You know, that's sixty assignment, sixty games that I didn't get to assign, which is, you know, one hundred and eighty assignments. So you know, they're all wondering that stuff, and and they all want to know what island tournaments i'm going to be assigning this year because i do one in st thomas i do one in jamaica so they're all uh jockeying for position to get to those why can't he get our us to do one saturday show in st thomas that would be that be tremendous can Listen, you, if you can, leave the border, it could be bad news. And now that he's making the millions and he's sitting on the big chair, <laughs> he should be able to do this now. Back when he was making pennies, I know he couldn't do it. Darn thing. Yeah, we, we got it. St. Thomas is great, I'm telling you. It's, put that down. We'll bring I Dino went with seven us. times as a referee. I never went to Maui, turned Maui down. Look at this. Listen, look at this. Look, we've got who, two, look at this outlaw okay, here. Two Hall of Famers now. We're going to get David a little bit later on Basically, as well. Basically, national coach of the year right yeah. there. Virginia Wesleyan's fine as yeah. well.
Hey, it's always a blast. We do mean thank you so much. I mean, your dad's in the Hall of Fame, and I think you've got yeah. some Hall calls coming your way. Uh, thank yeah, you so Brian, much. Brian will be there. There's no question. Thank you so there. much. Y'all need anything, please do not hesitate to call. Sure. Uh, thank Thomas, you very much. Uh, 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 St. Thomas, Thomas Islands, baby. That's what we need. Work on that. 19th of November, baby. All right. Put it down. Yeah. I'm there. Three-hour yeah. flight from Charlotte. Hey, whatever you're paying for, I'm there. I'll send you a drink back from first class. <laughs> yeah, you would do that, too. It would be an empty glass. I know that. Always a pleasure. Brian Kersey, the ACC. CAA and A10 Supervisor of Officials with us here on ESPN Radio 94.1. We're going to have Rick Height, head basketball coach at Kings Fork, also the 16 under coach for Boo Williams travel team coming up next. We'll probably pop on Dave Macedo at some point, Virginia Wesleyan, Rob Kennedy, as well as Steve Keller from the Hoop Group. But we're going to take a timeout and come back with more here from the Southern Jam Fest in Hampton with the coach Ed Young. I'm Matt Hatfield. Dino Franza back in our Virginia Beach studios, and he's got an update coming your way right here on ESPN Radio 94.1. This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk with Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young on ESPN Radio 94.1. Back here at the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest in Hampton at the Boo Williams Sportsplex. It is ESPN Radio 94.1 and 757 Saturday Sports Talk. Matt Hatfield here with you, the Coach Ed Young as well. We're pleased to be joined by the head basketball coach, of the Kingsport Bulldogs who won the Class 4 state championship in 2019-2020, sharing that title and honor with the Woodrow Wilson presidents. And uh, one of the best teams around as they have a bunch of talented prospects returning for this coming season to not have a basketball season. We say hello to the man that's also the head coach of the Boo Williams 16 and under travel team, BWSL Height EYBL, winners of Two games this morning, 79-56 to 56 over Team Wildcat, HGSL, and 74-41 to 41 over Gardner Road, North Carolina Bryant. We say hello to Coach Rick Height. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Matt. Uh, good morning, Coach Young. Good morning, How are you guys Rick. Doing? And, and i got to add also, he, he won the title in 1920, right? 19 and, and 20, not 1920. And I'm going to say it because a lot of people won't. He would have won the title this past year had we had a season. So write that down, people out there, if you don't like it. Call Hatfield and complain. But they would have won in greater fashion by themselves. They were that good. No, I appreciate it. You know, uh, hats off to uh, Smithfield. Hats off to those that would, was able to play. You know, it's one of those yes. unfortunate situations. But, you know. And, and please, that's no disrespect no, no, to Smithfield, absolutely, absolutely. the oldest supporter, because he's done a, great job. a tremendous job over there and, and due respect to them. Yeah. But I'm saying, based on what I've saw these teams and on paper, uh, Kings Fork, you just had, first of all, got it to hit Epps. Yeah. Okay. But your your support players around him would be studs on other teams. They just do a great job of the different facets of the game. And of course, you keep everything hopping. So I'm just telling you. Thank you, Coach. Now, you would have had to play us twice. Yeah. We would have gave you all I could have, but we just didn't Absolutely. have some of that stuff there. But we would try to make you sweat a little bit. Well, we're just trying to follow, you know, what you guys have done in the past and what you've been doing for your whole career. So you know, we, got, we got a good good blueprint to, to well, keep we'll stuff at basketball Nips, going. Who is a spectacular coach uh, who we can spend hours about talking about, this wonderful mm. player he is. But you also had some other great players that Ed mentioned, the, mm. the George Beals, the yes. Caleb Browns now, the mm. Bravion Campbells, the Quentin Livingston who just made a commitment this week to Hampton, which we'll yeah. talk about. But um, And Ed's spoken about this at length on our show. I want to hear your piece of it. Mm. I know it was frustrating for not just the city of Suffolk with you guys at Kings Fork, him at Nans, whatever, yeah. Clint at Lakeland, but Norfolk and Newport News and Hampton. It, some of you guys were fortunate enough, and kudos to those that allowed it to happen with Boo Williams here and Lamont others helping spearhead that mm -hmm. for Mitchville, having some kind of a league. But it wasn't the same. Unfortunately, it's not having the same type of season that the Bay River schools were privileged to have as well as the yeah. Beach District schools. How did you guys cope with it? Because it was already hard enough you didn't get to play that mm -hmm. state championship. Granted, you got the, the title, the trophy, the shirts, the co-champion moniker, people say. But yeah. was this, this had to be more difficult because you didn't get to play the games and you had no season at all for a lot of your seniors. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we kind of we kind of pushed the narrative, hey, you know, we'll get next year to, to try to make up for, you know, I guess the co-champions. And then, you know, we just kept kind of wait, waiting and waiting you know, and thought they you know, we would have a season. Then the shoe dropped. That Suffolk, uh, you know, made their decision. And you know, for the kids, it was disappointing. You know, again, I, you know, I appreciate what Coach said about you know having a chance to win it. Yeah, and, and we really believe we had a chance. You know, on top of that, we was we we're going to play a national schedule, uh, really challenge ourselves. Uh, so it was it was a hard pill to swallow. Uh, I try to tell the kids, but you know, adversity will follow you. Is what you do with adversity that will, will, will tell the story. So, you know, we dealt with it. We're still dealing with it. And, uh, you know, we're moving forward. 
And I think, too, Rick, the biggest thing is, and I felt this, and I know you, the seniors lost out. Yeah. And that, that's a slap in the face because most of those kids have been playing forever. Forever. And now you look forward to your senior season, which for a lot of them could be it in terms of organized basketball. Mm -hmm. And I know I always emphasize to our seniors, how are you going to go out? This, this is if we – they didn't get that chance. Absolutely. Yeah, we had the league here, which was okay here, booze, and – but it was not the same. It had more of a summer type atmosphere to it, mm -hmm. and it was and it was helpful for our young kids. But I really feel for our seniors because they'll a they will never get it back, and b a lot of them will not play again. They won't have the opportunity to play again. So that part was one that's, that was really hard to take. Coach, that's that's absolutely correct. And and you know this, you know we're we're more than just basketball coaches. We're 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 an outlet, and when they're not around us, you know the temptations of the world are heightened and you know so that was my biggest concern the seniors juniors all, all the kids you know obviously like you said seniors lose out on basketball seasons graduations prom, Proms, all, yes. you know, everything and you know obviously you, you make a decision but the impact really can last a lifetime and and really really where the hits is and it is what hurt me mm -hmm. is you don't have that chance to see them on a regular Sit down and talk about some other things. Absolutely. Develop those rules. Let's flip and go to the younger kids who are starting to come in a program where, and, and you know this, a program speaks for itself wherever you've been, that that's the reason teams can win. You've got to have talent mm -hmm. to win, period. And and, it's, and how you your schedule goes are the two big factors. But those relationships you can build, you've got to see what's going on with these kids off the court. Some of us have kids that are, as you said, risky situations, temptations can get them. And when, when they're around us a lot, we can we can take that crap out of the way. Absolutely. And that's really what was a big thing we missed. You get it. You get it. You, you, you wanted the best for a reason. You get it. So, you know, we, we're still dealing with it. We're talking with Rick Height here at the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest. He is the head boys basketball coach for Kings Fork Bulldogs who won a state championship in the 2019-2020 campaign. He's also the head coach of the 16 and under BWSL Height EYBL team, which won its first two games by whopping margins of 23 and 33 this morning. They're next in action tomorrow at 8 a.m. on Court 1 here at the Boo Williams Sportsplex here at the Southern Jam Fest. It is ESPN Radio 94.1. Our show brought to you by Larry King Law, and also we want to thank the folks here at Hoop Group for having us. But uh, let's delve into your current cast of guys, but with the 16 and under team as well as at King's Fork. Well, I guess it's really neat you're coaching your son, Ryan, and also... AAU as well as high school season, and now you get the family out of here, um, the wife out of here, everybody here. So it's kind of a neat kind of uh, joining of seeing what he's doing at his growth and maturation, right? Yeah, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's two full-time jobs, or three being a dad as well. So, you know, it's, it's good to, to be around basketball. It's good to be around competitive people. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's done a really good job of dealing with the adversity. And, uh, you know, he's coming off a concussion. Then he rolled his ankle here today. So I'm like, hey, man. Just got to push through it. But we have a really talented 16 group. Well, I think Ed can uh, talk about this, too. One of the things that we always notice about Ryan in games is he's not scoring maybe the grand total of points that maybe a Livingston or a Beal or even Jay Nepps who's putting up, you know, close to 30 a game every night. But he's always drawing a key charge, making some of those X-factor hustle plays for you guys. Um, on this 1600 team, we're talking about Kings Fork and your squad there. Who are some other guys to watch out for who have been contributing for your uh, team success so far. I know you got the young man who also plays at Mitchville, Alan's little brother. Is yeah, Etienne, 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 okay. Etienne has been uh, been incredible. Uh, we have Justin Boggs uh, from up St. Andrews. Okay. Uh, it's been incredible. Tyler Thompson from Panther Creek High School. Um, now, for those that don't know where Panther Creek is, that is North Carolina. North Carolina. Okay. North Carolina. Um, uh, Ethan Ward, Josh Sim from uh, Western Arbor Mall. It has been incredible. He played him in our Virginia yeah, Prep's class yeah. a couple years ago. And, and, big kid, yeah. Big kid needs making a lot of yeah. huge strides. He's making huge strides uh, playing with us. You know you know how we play. We, we get up, we, we pressure, we play fast. You know, kind of different than what he played at Western Auburn. But he, he's embraced it. He's challenging himself. And, uh, you know, we, we push a collective effort. You know, so, a different different guy, different night. Uh, Jaden Pace. Who, who wasn't on this team at first that plays for Kickatan High School. Uh, but, uh, you know, the kid has some, some unique abilities. He makes shots. He, he listens. And uh, so he's been he's been playing really well, especially when Ryan has been out. You know, guys have stepped up. And, uh, you know, the hard thing is we, we don't practice 
the way we would. You know, we're, we kind of do a lot of stuff on the fly. Uh, but, but again, the guys are buying in. Uh, you know, we have a lot of guys at AAU. You usually get eight, nine guys. You know, we got we got 13, 14 guys. And, uh, you know, but they, they relish their role, and, and that's how we're going to play the rest of the summer. And uh, Ethan Ward out of Lancetown. Yes, sir. Correct, yes, sir. Yeah, so you got some can, size as well as uh, Yeah, we, and that, and we got different combinations. We could, we could play different different ways if need be. But the, the, the most part, you know, we just get after it. We just get after it. And I, uh, we'll talk about the current guys, but let's talk about the guy, one of the guys that's leaving you as far as graduating, Quentin Livingston. Yeah. Um, we know how much he, passion and emotion he plays with. He's going to Hampton University, and I believe he suffered, was it some kind of an off-season injury? Yeah. But he'll redshirt, I guess, this year. Give yeah. us kind of the lowdown on that. Achilles, he hurt his Achilles. Okay. Uh, you know, but Coach Joyner, you know, saw a lot still in Q, uh, wanted to bring him on board. And, uh, and school still was trying to get him. You know, it was unfortunate injury but you know q is a kid that's you know passionate and he he, he wants it so he, he's ahead of uh progress and you know he he's looking forward to getting over to hampton and, and, and getting that work in but i'm happy for him you know like coach said you know some seniors don't have that ability to go to the next level because they lose a the season fortunately he was able to do a lot and, and still be on the radar and always great Ed, to see some of the kids from the 757 get the opportunity to play their college basketball for the hometown hometown fans. Well, what's neat, first of all, I've, I've coached against Q for a couple, few years. Tensity brings it. And I, my little comments, sometimes I'll talk to certain players after a game, and I used to, I said to Q, you need to tone it down, son. You have great energy. You understand the game. Listen to your coach, but you get hot-headed at times. I said, now, me coaching against you, we work on that. We work to get under your skin because mm -hmm. that's what scouting's about. And, and you're playing right into that. And, and I'm telling the kid this thinking, well, i got to play him again. I'm trying to, I'm trying to give him cues to beat me. But it doesn't matter. That all doesn't matter. The thing is, he's a, he's a hell of a player and, a, and, and he's a competitor, which is what I want our guys to be too. Mm -hmm. We just have to find ways to be able to beat him anyways. But he has done that. And I get a tribute. I got a tribute to, to Coach Height here. Kids just don't turn around on their own. You've got to have somebody over them. You know, we got to play the bad guy role a lot um, to get something out. Because we tell kids, our job is to get the best out of you any way we can. Mm -hmm. And our, usually our biggest enemy is them mm -hmm. and, and doing that. But Q has done that. And hats off to Coach Joyner at Hampton. Very few D1 coaches would touch a kid unless he was one and done NBA bound. Mm -hmm. Would definitely not touch a kid with an injury because you just don't know what you're really getting. Even if he recovers, spends all that time. So that's a tremendous um, statement on Joyner's part. I think Q will pay pay him great dividends. I think he will because his intensity in the weight room is great. It's all about rehab. He has that whole year to understand that. And, I, again, hats off to Q and Coach Joyner. Great connection. Absolutely. And I, and I just want to add, and that's that's the beauty of Suffolk. Suffolk basketball, and, I, and you guys have heard me say this many a time, it's a great place with great basketball, with great basketball coaches. It's competitive as any spot I've been in. But also coaches help kids because they understand it's more than just wins and losses. And that's where, that's why I always say Suffolk basketball is a place. I tell college coaches, come through Suffolk. Come through Suffolk. Don't bypass it. To get to Hampton or, or, or North Norfolk, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. get to Suffolk. I know we're up against a break here, but I got a couple more questions for you. Let you run here. Rick Height, the head basketball coach at Kings Fork, also the 16 under coach for the Brew Williams Height EYBL travel team here from the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest on ESPN Radio 94.1. All right, Ed wants to know the real, the real deal. Yep. How do I stop Jaden Ness? Because he's probably been the state's most lethal scorer since, oh, by the way, a guy you coached at Petersburg and Frank yep. Mason. How do you stop this guy? And uh, give us sort of the update because he just decommitted this mm -hmm. week from Providence. There's been a lot of whispers to the public. Is he coming back? What can you, what can you tell us? Is he going to Nansville River? Well, no, I he's not going to Nansville River, I don't think. Yeah. I got to know what's going on. I would love for that to happen. Give us sort of the update on recruiting and then also uh, his game. And How does that stop him? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> the, the, kid, the, kid is, the kid is a worker. You know, so he, 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 takes, he takes it serious. He's in the gym. He gets his work in, right? You know, he understands that he, he's a marked guy, so to speak. But he just works and he grinds. You know, he obviously committed to Providence. He committed here in the last couple of days. It, colleges have still been trying to get him, right? And you know, big time schools. And he just he wanted to say he wanted to go through the process, get out, travel, see schools, ask the right questions, you know, play summer basketball, get back around crowds. And so he, he made that uh, choice to decommit. No disrespect to Providence, 
Coach Cooley, Coach, Coach Ivan Thomas, who, who did a really good job recruiting him. He just wanted to have that that aspect of because he, he worked so hard. And, and mind you, bigger schools as far as ACC or uh, uh, Big Ten or Big Twelve you know, are coming to try to get him. You know, he said he was going to go through the summer and, and, and then decide on the college. Everybody wants to know if he's coming back to Kings Fork or headed to uh, uh, Nashville River, a, 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 <laughs> River or, or, or a prep school. You know, like. We have a good culture in place at Kings Fort. He understands that he could have went anywhere last year. He decided to come back to Kings Fort. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna support the kid either way. You know, we've had we had a conversation here last night, and I just told him, listen, follow your happiness. Follow your happiness. Pick, be all right with it, and, and I'm gonna support you either way. You know. We're at King's Fort. We have a good culture in place. We, we, we like to think we got some good guys that's going to continue on playing good basketball. If he comes back, absolutely bonus. Absol- absolutely a bonus. And if he doesn't, then, you know, again, we wish him the best. We love him to death. But we got some other guys, you know. But with that being said, I'm going to say, hey, look, come on back and, and be a bulldog, you know, because I, I, I feel like he won't go backwards playing at Kings for it. and he understands that and, and, and he and I got a, got a genuine love for each other. Well, last one we'll let you go because we are over up against it clockwise. Yep. You've coached a guy in Frank Mason who's admitted to the NBA. You've coached a guy in Jay Epps who certainly has potential pro mm-hmm. abilities and qualities. You also coached a guy at Collegiate by the name of Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. We talked back in uh, November, I think it was. Give us a real quick in about a minute or two okay. story on Russell, the guy that is uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now from his days in high school to now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because I got him as an eighth grader, and we had we had real conversations. I, I knew he would be special. I'm like, oh, yeah, you, how do you know? Because when you talk to him, he listens. He looks at you. He listens. He, he absorbs it, and then he performs. And to be so young at that time, he would always ask grown-up questions. And I watch him today. We still talk to this day. And it's, it's amazing, you know, at, at how he's able to transform a group. He's a, he's a natural leader. And Frank, natural leader, didn't talk as much as Russ. Epps didn't talk as much as Russ. But they all have natural leadership ability. And they look at you different when you talk to them. So that it quality is that you it's a, it's, that, that is a, and, and you know it when you see it. Well, always a pleasure. Uh, best wishes to you uh, this winter and beyond. And Ed will say, I hope you win every game except the two yeah, or how many games you play against yeah, the Warriors. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I got to say it. I gotta, and I hope the best for Epps, but I pray to God he goes elsewhere. <laughs> I'm, and what do you want me to say? Stay at King's Fork and drop 50 on us again? Well, he did do that. Was it, or 40, no, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 40. The, se- the second game, he, he, <laughs> Co- Co- Coach brought that Ed Young special. Yeah, we, 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 and, and, and my fatherly kid dropped 42, yeah. so we try to do it too. But, hey, yeah. no, you're right. And, it, and, Rick, it's the nature of the beast nowadays. Yeah. We, we used to have a, a player of that nature. We never have to worry about it. It is what it is. Like you said, you wish him the best. Hey, this is what – you already know what we have. Yes. Okay. And, and this idea, and I don't want to get on a tangent because I know we're up against it. Kids don't need – when they're already in a good program under the right type of coach, you don't need to go to IGM or BMG or <laughs> OCT or whatever <laughs> schools you – and why? Well, to get the kid ready for school. Okay. Isn't he already being looked at where he was? Well, yeah. Okay, so why? Well, he'll play better competition. Okay, he's playing AAU. What do you mean? See, I, you can't throw that stuff at me because I go on a tangent. If you have the right situation, the right people around him, you don't need to go anywhere else because here, – and here's my justification. I'll shut up. Back in the day when you didn't have all this craziness going on, didn't all those kids go high school, college, pro, Hall of Fame? Okay. So, so yeah, you're right. Some names I see yeah, here, right. Alonzo, I see uh, right. Iverson. So, so some of these names all of a sudden, nowadays, they have to go to all those schools I met. Please, man, yeah. go to break before I, yep. I all right. make Thank a customer. Coach, no, a appreciate you guys. All right, have a good job, man. Boys basketball coach at Kings Fork with us, also the head coach of the 1600 team, which will be back in action on Sunday at 8 o'clock. We'll take a timeout, come back with more here from the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest on Ed Young's favorite radio station. You know it's ESPN Radio 94.1. This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk with Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young on ESPN Radio 94.1. All right, back here at the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest in Hampton. It's the Boo Williams Sportsplex. We are broadcasting 757 Saturday Sports Talk powered by Larry King Log here this morning. Matt Hatfield along with the Coach Ed Young. And we are privileged to be joined by a special guest. He is the 
head man of Team Loaded Travel Team, and what a story they have been, their growth and development over the years, and he's also won not one, not two. I think it's three state championships as the head man of the John Marshall Justices in Richmond where justice is served. We say hello to our pal Ty White this morning here on ESPN Radio 94.1. Good to see you. We're getting back to some semblance of normalcy, right? Certainly. Thank you for having me on this morning. Well, it's our pleasure. I know it was tough for you. We just had on Rick Height from King Sport Coach. Uh, you had a team that could have won another state championship going back-to-back -back with a bunch of talented young men. Roosevelt Wheeler, who's off to the next level. You can tell people about him. you got Dennis Parker Jr. back. Jason Nelson, who's going to be the hometown kid for the Richmond Spiders. Uh, Wheeler going to Louisville, I believe it is, there in the yeah. ACC. Uh, didn't get the season in. How crushing was it for you and your kids, and how did you guys adapt not having that season? It was very difficult for the guys. Um, they worked really hard, extremely hard, and they were looking forward to a great year. Um, we had the likes of Ty Lacey, who's committed to Mary Washington. Um, guys were just really, really anticipating a great year. Dana Whitley, who's um, set to commit in the next couple weeks. Um, so it was a great, great disappointment. Um, they got a chance to play a little club ball by the, with um, Blue Magic, um, so they did get some quality games in, but it was nothing like that atmosphere of a state championship and an opportunity. Now, you're an 804 guy, but you always relish the opportunity of playing all comers, going out of state to play big-time competition in tournaments in Georgia, Florida, you name them, and you always come down here to the 757 for many, many years. It was the uh, fall league here, the Ben Moore fall league here that you guys have won many a times, and people love watching your kids compete and battle. And also in our Virginia Preps Classic, you've played numerous uh, teams over the years that have been uh, quality. You think of Cape Henry, you think of Lanstown, you think of all these different squads you've played over the years. Um, what is it about coming to this area and then also just challenging your kids on a regular basis? Because not everybody does that. Well, we're from the mindset of iron sharpens iron. Um, the reason you work so hard, push kids so hard, is for the opportunity to compete at the highest level. And um, years prior to me um, becoming head coach, I noticed that all those state championships were coming from 757. So I said, we better find a way down there. <laughs> And I remember that because in running the, the Ben Moore Fall League, which is going to be making a comeback this, this fall, I remember Ty and we said to me, and he called me and talking about, we want to come down there. It blew my mind because I'm thinking, you're, but Ty, you live in Richmond. <laughs> Can you get your kids down? Coach, whatever it takes, because if we're going to win titles, we have to come through 7 by 7 So what he's saying, I testified to because he told me that. And, and they have been here every time that they were supposed to be here, they were here. Whether it was five players, six players, they, they were here. They were never, hey, we're stuck in traffic. Hey, we don't feel like coming this time. They made the commitment. And, of course, they upped the, the idea of the league. And our kids were privileged to play a couple cra crazy battles. Back when I had Andre Jones and Nick Wright and those guys, we had some great battles with these kids here. So I testify that to it. Of course, he was wearing many hats. He's, he's got team loaded, one of the best in the country. And as he walked in, he was looking at a kid from Nebraska, Iowa, and Idaho who might look good in the in the uh, of the blue and black of the Marshall kids. So he's he's busy. He, he, Ty's just so busy. In all seriousness, though, Ty, uh, to follow up there on Ed's comments, you know, I think it's really fascinating to watch. We've said it for many years what Boo Williams and what a wonderful job he's done in building his grassroots travel team. And you guys at Team Loaded starting something from the ground up. Tell me about when you put on the TV now and you see these guys in college basketball, just the numerous, for folks that aren't familiar with it, you can put on today's NBA playoff games, Heat Bucks. You're going to see a guy that played for Team Loaded. You're going to see some of these games tonight. The Western Conference played for Team Loaded. How, how satisfying and rewarding is that to see that they're getting these chances to fulfill these dreams, beginning with this travel, sort of getting this type of exposure and growing from there? First, let me pay homage to a guy by the name of Boo Williams who's helped a lot of people, a lot of families um, be successful. So I uh, uh, utmost respect for that man who's helped a lot of people. And he's kind of set the model and the blueprint for a lot of things that we do. Um, we've been fortunate enough with Team Loaded to have over 300 kids go Division One since 2010. Wow. We've had four, we have 14 guys in the NBA. Um, so we were really, really fortunate. Three, even three NFL guys now. <laughs> who, okay, so who are some of those NBA and NFL guys? I know Bam Adebayo. Bam Adebayo, guys, Dennis yep. Smith, Cody, Cody and Caleb Martin, um, Frank Mason, um, D uh, Mamadi Diakite, um, Nate Hinton, Josh Hall. Um, I'm missing guys. Quentin Spain football, like Jake McGee football. So we've, we've, we've been very, very fortunate. I, I know I'm going to leave some names out, but Isaiah Todd, we even had it for a bunch. He, he'll get a shot this year as well. So we've been very fortunate to be around some talented guys. Sure. And, I mean, you look at it now, it, it's so funny to see. I mean, people come here today and they see, you know, obviously we got the number one and number two ranked player in the country playing for team final here with Amani Bates and um, Jalen Duran, but people still talk about that memorable clash Team Loaded and Williams had five, six years ago when you had guys like Miles Bridges and 
Fawn Maker and Bam Adebayo and this guy. The talent that comes here year after year at the Southern Jam Fest, it is pretty amazing to look back on, isn't it? I can honestly say this year's event is the most talented tournament that they've ever had. and um, we're, we're fortunate to be a part of it. Um, we're, we're just looking forward to the good competition. All I can say is can we have this dance because we want to play everybody who's supposed to be somebody. That's the only way you can kind of find your way. If you say you want to be the best, you got to play those. Sure. Teams. Well, if I asked you to tell us all the great players for Team Loaded, we would be here for 25 more minutes. We know your time is short as is ours, but give us a few of the names that people are coming out this weekend or they're going to be watching on the live stream or checking out in the future, maybe in July, some some of the headliners because I already watched your 1600 group. Very impressive group with Carter Lang earlier today, and you've got some guys on the 17s that could very well be some college basketball stars. You never know, a pro or two. Got a chance, man. Jay Neps is the first name that comes to mind. Um, Donald Hand. Um, Tyler Nickel. That's the backcourt, by the way. Hand and F. Have fun defending those guys, right? Man, right there. Wow. <laughs> so uh, we got Kenyon Giles. We got Alonzo, Alfonso Billups. Um, we have um, Malik Brown. Um, we have we have a talented, talented group of guys, man, who just don't mind playing hard. Big Dave doesn't mind being physical inside. Um, we got a good group, man. Uh, we, we're gonna see a surprise today too. And you, and you mentioned Tyler Nickel, who could very well break Mac McClung, who played for you guys, all-time scoring record in Virginia High School League history. He could easily be the best player on the floor or could be the third or fourth or fifth option on the floor, right? Absolutely. Tyler's a tough nut, man, and he's going to be a hard, hard out every single night. He plays so hard. Um, he, he, he'll do whatever you need him to do, inside, outside. He, he can score in a bunch of different ways. He scores on all three levels. He's just really, really good. Now, the question I get, Ty, for you, and I've had this. I don't. I don't coach the AU level. I, high school is enough for me. How do you bring so much talent together? Studs, hand and Epps, studs. But you got one basketball. What do you do at this level to make sure it all works? To make sure they all stay, and that you keep getting that type of player because you're a national level team. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's easy to say. Um, you say Steph Curry and Clay Thomas play together. Yeah. If, if it works for them, then it could work for you two guys, to sure. be honest with you. So um, I think we paint a big picture, a long-term picture. We've had Frank Mason and Tyler Lewis in the backcourt together. So if that works, guess what? It could work for you guys too. So um, great teams play with a couple good guards, and it's about a bigger picture. You know what I mean? And so if you want to play that national schedule, you you got to have some weapons with you as well. And, and I would think too, okay, Epps on his team carries a lot. They're good, but he carries a lot of load. So does Hand. Now they come to you, they don't have to do that because what they have around them. And, and, and it does try to teach them that when you go to the next level and lucky enough to go to the NBA level, you're going to have that talent around you. You just have to find what your niche is. And it's not always – because a lot of kids think it's all about shooting. But can you do the other things that to win in the game of basketball? I think maybe that's sometimes something that – you guys can impart on them also. No question. One of the humbling things about college basketball, the first day you get there, you're going to see a first-team All-Stater there in your position as well, a several, matter of fact. So you have to get accustomed to um, playing with talent, being around talent, and adjusting. I think Jalen Holmes said it to us best uh, of the Minnesota Vikings who started at Lake Taylor High School in Ohio State. He's like, once you get to, like, Columbus or somewhere like that, them four or five stars don't matter. They go out the window. I'll get you on this one, Coach. We thank you for stopping by. The state of basketball, high school basketball, college basketball, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, you got one-and-done guys like going to the G League, not going to college hoops. There's been so many, you know, the one-time transfer rule. Kind of give me your, in your opinion, as a, as a high school coach, also a grassroots organizer, the state of the game, and what would you like to see change? Anything in particular you'd like to see be uh, kind of tweaked a little bit in basketball, be at the high school or the college level in your eyes? I'll start with the high school level. Um, the shot clock, I think, okay. is so, so important to have a shot clock. To, if you, we're painting a picture of how next level is, then we have to give them a, the chance to play with that shot clock. Teaches value in possessions. Um, you're not allowed to stall the ball at the end of games. You have to play through possessions. Um, so that, I'll start with the um, the whole idea of a shot clock. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. College game, anything in particular you'd like to see changed or no? <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. Okay. <laughs> Do with the high school stuff. Well, hey, thank you for stopping by. Always a blast uh, watching your guys compete and battle. And uh, thank you for always giving us the access and coverage. Look forward to seeing how your guys uh, develop here moving on. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's Ty White, yeah, Ty. the head man of thank Team Loaded AAU travel team, also the head basketball coach of the John Marshall Justices, three-time state champs. And I think they're going to go for a fourth this coming season in Class 2, Ed. Uh, I've, I've said it this way every year. They can win this 2A state title and then the following weekend play – 
who's ever won five or six or four and probably have a great chance of winning that too. Can't say that about a lot of teams. Uh, we are past for a break again. We're going to take another time out and come back with more an hour or two here of our marathon. We could be here for eight, nine hours, but uh, we got to sign off at noon. So more to come here from the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest at the Booplex here in Hampton. It's your home for sports, whether it's pro, college, high school, local. We give it all to you on ESPN Radio 94.1.